the forgiven world. Can you imagine how beautiful those you forgive will look to you? In no fantasy have you ever seen anything so lovely. Nothing you see here, sleeping or waking, comes near to such loveliness. And nothing will you value like unto this, nor hold so dear. Nothing that you remember, that made your heart seem to sing with joy, has ever brought you even a little part of the happiness this sight will bring to you. For you will see the Son of God. You will behold the beauty that the Holy Spirit loves to look upon and that he thanks the Father for. He was created to see this for you until you learned to see it for yourself. And all his teaching leads to seeing it and giving thanks with him. This loveliness is not a fantasy. It is the real world, bright and clean and new, with everything sparkling under the open sun. Nothing is hidden here, for everything has been forgiven, and there are no fantasies to hide the truth. The bridge between that world and this is so little and so easy to cross that you could not believe it is the meeting place of worlds so different. And yet this little bridge is the strongest thing that touches on this world at all. This little step, so small, it has escaped your notice, is a stride through time into eternity and beyond all ugliness into beauty that will enchant you and that will never cease to cause you wonderment at its perfection. This step, the smallest ever taken by anything, is still the greatest accomplishment of all in God's plan of atonement. All else is learned, but this is given, complete and wholly perfect. No one but him who planned salvation could complete it thus. The real world in its loveliness you learn to reach. Fantasies are all undone. No one and nothing remains still bound by them. And by your own forgiveness, you are free to see. What you see is only what you have made with the blessing of your forgiveness on it. And with this final blessing of God's Son upon himself, the real perception, born of the new perspective he has learned, has served its purpose. The stars will disappear in light and the sun which opened up the world to beauty, will vanish. Perception will be meaningless when it has been perfected. For everything that has been used for learning will have no function. Nothing will ever change to shifts, no shifts, no shadings, no differences, no variations that made perception possible will occur. The perception of the real world will be so short that you will barely have time to thank God for it. For God will take the last step swiftly when you have reached the real world and have been made ready for Him. The real world is attained simply by the complete forgiveness of the old. The world you see without forgiveness. The great transformer of perception will undertake with you the careful searching of the mind that made this world and to uncover to you the seeming reason for your making it in the light of the real reason 
that he brings. As you follow him, he will show you there that there was no reason here at all. Each spot his reason touches grows alive with beauty, and what seemed ugly in the darkness of your lack of reason is suddenly released to loveliness. Not even what the Son of God made in insanity could be a hidden spark of beauty that gentleness could release. All this beauty will rise to bless your sight as you look upon the world with forgiving eyes. For forgiveness literally transforms vision and lets you see the real world reaching quietly and gently ac across chaos and removing all illusions that had twisted your perception and fixed it onto the past. The smallest leaf becomes a thing of wonder, a blade of grass, a sign of God's perfection. From the forgiving world, the Son of God is lifted easily to his home, and there he knows that he has always rested there in peace. Even salvation will become a dream and vanish from his mind, for salvation is the end of dreams, and with the closing of the dream will have no meaning. Who awake in heaven could dream that there could ever be need of salvation? How much do you want salvation? It will give you the real world, trembling with readiness to be given you. The eagerness of the Holy Spirit to give you this is so intense he would not wait, although he waits in patience. Meet his patience with your impatience at delay in meeting him. Go out in gladness to meet with your Redeemer and walk with him in trust out of this world and into the real world of beauty and forgiveness.